my friends, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here again, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. I find myself having the need to speak to you, and I'm thinking about how my approach should be. As I'm coming before you, I'm thinking everyone likes a positive message, a message that's uplifting, a message that makes them feel hopeful and energized to go forward. And my experience teaches me that that is a wonderful approach. The a reality of it that is usually left out of that a scenario is that there are a lot of negative consequences about it as well. To go forward with that positive attitude in a situation where you're really in mud, but the positive make denies that you're in the mud. And so you have to ask yourself, is it expedient to try to lift you up knowing that you're going to stay in the mud, but you have been lifted up? Or if you should be given facts, knowing that those facts let you know that you're in the mud, but gives you an opportunity to know as well that there is a possibility that you can lift yourself up. So you have to deal with those two approaches as I coming before you today. I would love to tell you the positive effects of front, but that would be misleading. And so I find that it is essential that you get it as clear as possible, which means that the suffering comes. From the suffering comes the joy. You know, I wish there was no suffering, but we've lived in life to the extent of time that we are so deep in the mire that only suffering will educate us. We all have our own opinions, and our opinions differ in so many ways. And we are so caught up in our own opinion and that allows us to be God and find ourselves not able to inter uh, associate with others. We find ourselves at odds with everyone else as if somebody has something that would take advantage of me. And I say that because I take advantage of them. All of these are the kinds of confusions that we have to deal with in life every day. And then you might find an honest person that comes in your midst. And would you know it if that one came into your midst? How would you determine he would speak the same things that you speak? How would you see that he's not on his own or she's not on their own streak? Or if they're not working for someone else against you? How do you determine that? Well, it seems very odd and at the same time quite amazing to me that since the beginning of time, it seems, at least that's the way history has been teaching us, that everything has been so important that death was a consequence if that importance, that which maintained it, was violated. They even in the garden, they say, you can do all things except this. And on the day you do this is the day you shall surely die. And then the expression comes back to you, the echo comes back, you will not surely die. And then you buy into that concept, and when you buy into it, you find out that you do. But not like you thought. Well, you never knew what death was, so any death was a death. A death you considered surviving. But now you're not under the dictates of the spirit. You're under the dictates of the flesh. And one of the first things that the flesh allows you to know in its dominance is that if you do not conform, you will surely die. And so everywhere you go, it seems as if death is the threat. So we might find ourselves asking ourselves every now and then, which path do we take? Which death is it? Well, somebody might say, well, it's a choice between the death to the right or the death to the left. 
It's all, it's all most like having two evils. In a, in a presidential election, you might have a Republican and a Democrat and each considered evil. And you ask yourselves, which one do you vote for? Well, if you find yourselves guided by the Republican evil or the Democratic evil, then that's where you vote. Nevertheless, you must understand that you represent evil. And to not vote, at least you didn't represent evil from these perspectives. And so when you see life on the line and you're seeing one way is death and another way is death, whose death do you choose? It seems to me that the only death that would be fitting, the only death that would be fitting is your choice. Is your choice of death. Not this one or that one, but your choice. But make sure that your choice is a choice that you can live with. Make sure that your choice of death is one that you can live with. Because you surely, my friend, as it was said before, are not going to die. But make sure that your choice is one that you can live with. I think I'll call this make sure that your choice is one that you can live with. I'm saying that, ladies and gentlemen, because it seems in our society that goodness is taboo. When you think about the movies, when you think about the books, the stories, TV, Everything presents its negative forces. Negative forces when you consider goodness. The things that you like to stay away from because it produces more of a negative that tears away rather than build up. But it seems all we are confronted with are the negative forces. The negative forces still sometimes that stuff which is ugly so much of it, and then eventually it starts looking beautiful. And so this is how people forget the track of life, by conforming to that which is imposed upon them, rather than eradicate it. We have situations where we live where that bait, what I call money, which is used to manipulate the human race. One of the current situations where it is so obvious is that investors, you know, for a moment here, gas prices have been relatively stable, sometimes low compared to what it has been in past times. But now, <clears throat> if you've listened to the media, they are informing the public that the gas prices are going to be going up. The gas prices are going to be going up. They're telling you who use gas. The prices are going to be going up. And they are telling you also that they are going to reduce production. What? We're going to stop producing as much gas as we have been to support our fact that we want to increase these prices increase these prices based on supply and demand. The supply has been reduced. The demand calls for higher prices. And you pay. Then that's what you call manipulation. That's what you call a system that milks you anytime it gets ready and you got nothing to say about it. And there is no politician nowhere in Washington anywhere soon going to stand back and say this is not happening. And even if they did say this is not happening, this is not a blessing to you because the problems that come from that which already exists are still remaining unless something is done to wipe that away. Now, where is that going to come from? That's going to come from you. But you must understand what you're dealing with. When I come to you, ladies and gentlemen, and speak to you, my heart usually is broken. Even when I come to you with an exciting message, my heart is broken because I know you're not going to go for it. I know the conformity. I have conformed to the ways of the world. I know exactly what you're going through every day. 
But I don't know. I don't know why I was picked on. I don't know why I was given a vision of how wonderful life could be if certain practices and principles were employed. I don't know why I was given that. I do know this. I do know that I have that information. I also know that in, a, in, in the moment in which this information was made available to me, if this information had, been, had not been made available to me, I would not be before you here today. Not only would I not be before you here today, I would not be on this earth. I might be in it, but not on it. But at that moment in time, this message was given to me. The authority was given to me. So I find myself coming to you constantly, 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 because I know you want peace. I know you want prosperity, and I know you want joy in your lives. I know that you want those necessities for survival to be met. Your food, your clothing, your shelter, your education, your health care, your careers. I know you want these things met. I know you want to dream. you got ambitions and you want to see them unfold, not only for you, but your children and your neighbor's children and children all over the land. I know you want this. But you've only listened to a voice that says that, no, some of us are better than others and we deserve more than others. And we have lied, we've cheated, we've stolen, we've caused of poverty, we've called crime and violence, we've called terrorism, we've called war, all in the in the pursuit of trying to have dominance over others. I know that there are those that are out there. And they have sworn that they'll do whatever they can. They will monitor everything you do. They will tape every word you say. They will video every move you make. And they will use it against you if you ever wake up. They would find something. They because everybody they know is constantly doing something that they don't want others to know about. This is why they tap your phone. This is why they go on your emails. This is why they find every piece of dirt, or look under every rock they can to find something on you so they can make you shut your mouth up if you ever wake up. But one thing they didn't know and didn't recognize is that when you wake up, then you've been forgiven for all of the things that you've done, and you're not ashamed anymore because you understand why you did it and you know why you stopped. Not only do you know why you stopped, you know why everybody else is still doing it. And you know what is required to get them to stop. And so to say something to you gives you an opportunity to feed back what they are denying. Whew. I really want you to enjoy these things. But the systems, every system, not just the United States system of government, every system of government on the face of the earth operates against the system that God put in place. Every system operates against peace, prosperity, and joy for everybody. Oh, it operates for that for some. You know, the secret societies, they do it for themselves, but they don't give a heck about you. Certain religious organizations care about it for themselves, they don't care about you. Certain races do it for themselves, but they don't care about you, and yet they want to call themselves godly and divine. My friends, we all here. And none of us made ourselves, so we're here because of the power that made us. And the power that made you made me. And if you're important, then so am I. And there should be an operation that would make us at peace, make us prosperous. But it's not my idea, your idea. I come to tell you, <laughs> it's from the maker. Now, Some people say, if we give Donald Trump a chance, he might surprise us. If he doesn't let the influence of those negative forces pull him away. It's the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life to hear somebody think like that. When the divine power of the universe is saying, all you have to do is resist whatever this man is bringing. Because whatever it is, is no different than that of Barack Obama, George W. Bush, or Ronald Reagan, or Bill Clinton. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. It's going to be some people going to get a blessing. It might even be you. But there are going to be some people that's going to be hurt, and that might be you. But I guarantee you, if one happens, the other one is going to happen. And there's only one way that you both can come out on top. And that is to trust God. Trust the maker. Don't trust me because I'm black. 
Don't trust him because he's white. Don't trust me because I'm a man. Don't trust her because she's a lady. Don't trust him because or she because they're young or, or her or him because they're old. Trust what the spirit does. And what is the spirit? The spirit is the breath of life. Well, thank you so very much for giving me this your time. I hope it wasn't a waste of time. Bye-bye.